My name is Melvin Foot. I'm the president of the constituency for Africa, CFA, um, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. For those of you who you don't know, CFA is a Washington, D.C.-based education and advocacy organization. We work to uh, educate Americans about Africa through cooperation and coordination among groups that work on African issues. And we work to shape U.S. policies toward Africa and trade and education conflict resolution. So I want to say it's a high honor for me to be with you today. And I think we're going to have a very serious uh, discussion around issues of diaspora and what it will take to mobilize support for Africa in the United States and throughout the world. Uh, to get us started, I'm going to call on uh, Jeanette Caligill, Caligill, uh, with, uh, who is uh, the person who is most responsible for organizing this meeting today. She came to me about two months ago and asked what CFA, partner with her organization, to organize this conference. So we had several meetings over the last two months. I found her a very dynamic person, very uh, committed to the cause of African people. And uh, she's a person who pushes very hard because she wanted this forum to take place. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Janet to come forward to welcome us to this conference. Thank you, uh, Mel, for your kind words. Good afternoon. Bonsoir. The uh, Honorable the Ambassador of African Union. I'm very happy uh, you have accepted to attend this forum. I would like also to uh, thank the Ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire for offering this venue and also for the refreshment that we'll have for later. And I also urge you to work with the African Union patiently as we want to create the future. Uh, the Honorable, the Ambassadors, Ambassador, Panelists, Panelist, Ladies and Gentlemen, thank you for coming Merci today to this forum. forum. This is a moment that took three organizations to come to this forum. I'm the president of Model C, which stands for Maison d'Oeuvre pour le Développement Économique et le Leadership of Works for la Côte d'Ivoire, which has been in existence for three years. It is my brainchild. Model C is established to empower Ivorian community, the diaspora, and to create businesses, and to become part of their marketplace, and also to empower the Ivorian community in the U.S. Model C doesn't discriminate in terms of religious, 
en termes de religion, sex, gender, gender, sex ou, or ethical origin. ou bien des origines ethniques. We are dedicated to the education of the Ivorian in the diaspora, professional development and economic development, and also working with faith-based organizations. Which led us to believe that the Ivorian diaspora can best be served Working together. That's why we come out together and created CADUS. And I've been also active, very active in the creation of CADUS. The essence of CADUS is to join the all of the Af 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 African diaspora. Organizations for the good of all the Africa, both for the English and the French speaking countries. We believe in collaboration, collaboration between the diaspora and its government of origin. The collaboration between the government of the host country. La collaboration entre le gouvernement et le pays d'accueil et la diaspora. We believe that we need to establish a partnership. Nous croyons qu'il est nécessaire d'établir un partenariat. And having a clear sound policy et avoir une, 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 une regarding African diaspora. Concernant la diaspora africaine. We result in a more prosperous Africa. Ce qui va créer une prospérité pour l'Afrique. We do have next steps on the future for which we would like to invite you to be part of it as we continue on our journey. Before I end, I would like to briefly uh, share with you some information on one of the uh, Issues for which I'm really passionate. It's regarding people with disabilities. As you know, only 3% of disabled children are completing primary education. And only 1% of girls with disabilities attend school. As we focus on solutions, how to better mobilize and use the potential of African diaspora. This is one of no, one of the issues that I would like us to really uh, focus on and urge some of the countries which have not yet ratified the convention, the UN convention on the right of people with disabilities. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Janet. Merci. Okay, uh, we're, uh, as you know, we're uh, in the embassy of uh, Côte d'Ivoire. And we have with us uh, His Excellency uh, Dada de Abate, the uh, ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire to the United States. And so without further ado, can I ask you all to stand and welcome to the podium, Ambassador de Abate.
Ambassador Amina Salum Ali, representative of the African Union to the USA. Dear colleague ambassadors and diplomats, Mrs. Uh, Janet Kalegil, chairwoman of Maison d'Oeuvre pour le développement économique et du leadership pour la Côte d'Ivoire, Model C. Chairman Melvin Foot, President of Constituency for Africa. Distinguished Chairman and Chairwoman, Doctors, Professors, other diplomats and representatives, ladies and gentlemen, without forgetting those of the press and media. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I want to welcome you at the Embassy of Côte d'Ivoire that uh, today can be considered after the African Union House as uh, the House of Africa. So to start, uh, I will say that it is uh, a great honor for me to welcome you here at the Embassy of Côte d'Ivoire on behalf of uh, the Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, His Excellency Daniel Cablan Duncan, who is attending, as you know, the IMF and World Bank Spring Meeting in Washington uh, since uh, a couple of days. Prime Minister Duncan has charged me to convey to, to you his greetings and uh, congratulations to the originators of this uh, forum and those who has uh, contributed to the success of this important event. Furthermore, he has uh, requested me to particularly uh, greet my colleague, uh, African diplomat, who has uh, contributed to the success of this event and uh, expressed his uh, regret for not being able to uh, meet them as uh, he usually do whenever he is here in Washington. And by the way, I want to mention that uh, Prime Minister Duncan come here to Washington twice a year because uh, in addition to his uh, position of Prime Minister of Cote d'Ivoire, he also is the Minister of Finance. It means those who deal with the IMS and World Bank issues. I would like uh, to express uh, also how much I and my staff at this embassy are pleased to be associated to the African Diaspora and Development Forum that is organized jointly by Model C and the Consortium of African Diaspora in the U.S. CADOS as well as uh, Consistency for Africa, Constituency for Africa, I mean CFA. CFA, which means uh, in my country, money. <laughs> First of all, allow me to kindly extend my gratitude and congratulation to Miss uh, Janet Kalegil, Chairwoman of Bodelsi. Mel just mentioned the dynamism of uh, Mrs. Uh, Kalegil. I can assure you that she is very dynamic. You have a testimony today. 
She's uh, the one who has, uh, let's say, conceived, organized this. Of course, at the last moment, she came to me and asked the embassy, and particularly the ambassador, to chair. And uh, how can I resist to such a request coming from such a dynamic woman? So I want you to give a huge applause. to the chairwoman of Modelsi. I also want to thank and congratulate uh, Mr. Melvin Foot, who is a long friend of mine, a long friend of Cote d'Ivoire, or should I say a long friend of Africa. He should be commended for his effort, his dedication to our continent, to our different countries. His, uh, has been always working tireless to make uh, happen every and every single event related to Africa. This is a man. If we can, uh, in French, we should say that si on pouvait le cloner, I don't know how to translate that in English. If we can clone him, we should have cloned it, multiplied so that uh, the relation between Africa and the U.S through such a call can boost as quick as we wish. So we want you to give a call and appeal to the <laughs> again. I also thank the representative of CADUS and all the, uh, the speakers and panelists who are participating at this great event. And before concluding this uh, recognition, I want to particularly insist on the presence of my dear friend and colleague and sister, Ambassador Ali Amina, the ambassador and representative of, of the AU to the United States of America. Uh, ambassador Amina is a, a great lady but I happened to know and meet first when I was serving in my position of our ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire to, to Brasilia. At the time, she, since she, from here she was supposed to cover, let's say, also Latin America, she come to visit uh, that part of the continent. And uh, fortunately, I cannot say in français on already par hasard, but uh, le hasard n'existe pas. <laughs> Uh, God uh, arranged that uh, the day she was visiting, I am the one who was chairing the African meeting at the residence of Cote d'Ivoire. So she was able to attend the African uh, ambassador's meeting at the residence of Cote d'Ivoire in Brazil, and she attended. It is where I met her when she was starting her duty here in Washington. So I was so happy when I returned to Washington to be working with her, and in addition to that, today she is uh, one of the closest ambassadors with whom I'm working in my new position of uh, chairman of the African ambassadors. So I cannot... Uh, I can't do anything without uh, uh, the representative of uh, African Union who is, let's say, the second lead of the chairmanship that we have been endowed by our colleague, African Ambassador. So I want to recognize uh, Ambassador Amina for her leadership, for what she has, been, she has been doing for our continent, and uh, to show you that uh, she is a very dynamic uh, lady. She has been able to find a house for Africa that we call Africa House, where we monthly meet for African ambassadors meeting. So, Ambassador Amina, thank you for coming. Thank you for your participation to that uh, great event related to diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the theme of the forum that gather us today 
African Diaspora and Development, Work Partnership. How can we discuss such an important question if we don't make ourselves a clear idea of the meaning, the composition, and the role that the African diaspora can play in favor of the African continent they come from? What do we sociologically mean by African diaspora? According to the African Union Commission, the African diaspora is defined as uh, people of African origin living outside the continent irrespective of uh, citizenship and uh, nationality and who are willing to contribute to the development of the continent and the building of the African Union. The African Union consider the diaspora, I mean the African diaspora, as the sixth region of Africa. The sixth region because we have already on the continent five regions which comprise West Africa, North Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and Southern Africa. So the sixth region of Africa is the one that is the diaspora. Uh, I should also say that the importance of the diaspora in the development is not emphasized enough. I only consider that even if the international community, the international development institution, the United Nations and the World Bank have acknowledged the value and critical role of diaspora in, uh, in the particular context of development, still diaspora can do more. That's why as soon as uh, it, has be, it has come to power, I'm going to speak about Cote d'Ivoire, the president of Cote d'Ivoire, President Alassane Ouattara, has recognized the importance of our diaspora. I mean the diaspora of Cote d'Ivoire, which part of uh, the African diaspora. In that uh, framework, President Ouattara has uh, created a full ministry dealing with the African diaspora issues. The Ministry of uh, African Integration um, and Ivorian living abroad. This uh, ministry has the responsibility of taking care of the uh, key issues related to the African uh, Ivorian diaspora. And the purpose of the creation of that ministry is uh, to better address our diaspora and uh, reinforce the link between our diaspora and the country of origin, I mean Cote d'Ivoire. Whenever the president is traveling, and we know that he has traveled a lot, whenever he is traveling, he meets the Ivorian diaspora and he made a call to them, asking them to come and take part to the reconstruction process and also to contribute to the, uh, to the relaunch of the Ivorian community, the Ivorian economy. You know that uh, Cote d'Ivoire has gone through 10 years of crisis. Now, after his uh, assumption of power, the president has uh, uh, defined a very strong developmental uh, uh, policy. To give you an idea, when he arrived to power, let's say three years ago, the rate growth of the country was minus 4.7%. I say minus, it means below zero. In December 2012, he took, he took power in uh, April uh, 2011, and in December 2012, the growth rate reached 9.8 percent. And uh, he has told the Ivorian people that uh, you want to make of Cote d'Ivoire an emerging market, an emerging country by 2020. So 
today, all the Ivorian people are working and the country is booming again. And that's why he has asked the Ivorian people living in the diaspora, those of the diaspora community, to come and take part to that, uh, that uh, developmental process that is very huge and to wish, in addition to those who are from Ivorian origin, we should specify that uh, we have also people that can be considered by the neighboring countries like the diaspora who live in Cote d'Ivoire. So we have a huge and long experience of the diaspora issue. Out of the 22 million of Ivorian people, we have 26% coming from the neighboring countries, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Senegal, uh, uh, Guinea, uh, Liberia, Ghana, and all these people live in Cote d'Ivoire. That is why we say that, speaking about the diaspora, we have diaspora, uh, that those who consider diaspora living in Cote d'Ivoire, but we also have our own diaspora. So we are very used to that issue. So what we want to say today, as an introductory remark, I want to let you know that uh, we are very, very uh, conscious of the importance of the diaspora. So we want you to know that the developmental issue is not only an issue of financing. We know the remit remittances, remittances, the people send money back home, a huge amount of money. Those who are experts in the issue will uh, give you the figures. But what I want to, to tell you is that the developmental issue go beyond the financial issue. It go even beyond the mineral resources and agricultural resources that we have. The developmental issue, the key issue of development is based on human resources. Because the leadership, the, human, the quality of the human resources that you have can transform a country consider that uh, without uh, uh, wealth to a wealthy country. And we are convinced that the diaspora, with the experience that they have accumulated by living abroad, living in another uh, environment, can be helpful and help our African countries go forward, be it in the economic sector or even in the democracy process that Africa is experimenting. That's why, before concluding, I want to say that it is a very important and a key issue for all of us. By mentioning that today, the Diaspora Forum of uh, Modelsi is being organized ahead, another forum that will be organized by African uh, ECOWAS countries in June. It means that it is a key issue for all of us. So I want to thank uh, uh, as well as Model C, CFA, and uh, the third one for hosting this uh, important uh, conference forum here at the Embassy of Cote d'Ivoire. So I want to thank you for your attendance and thank the panelists for the key interest and contribution that they will give to that uh, forum. I cannot conclude without uh, mentioning again that uh, Cote d'Ivoire is back. You know Cote d'Ivoire has gone through a crisis. Now the country has come back and uh, the country is boosting under the leadership of uh, a president that we also consider um, uh, has been from the diaspora because he spent almost more than 20 years here in the USA. He has the uh, uh, US experiences, and uh, I think that that has been very helpful, bringing the country for a growth rate of minus 4.7% 4. to 9.8% 9. Uh, 9 in less than two years. This is what diaspora can also do. I want to thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, the third organization that helped put this together is uh, the Consortium of African Diaspora in the United States, or CADU. And I would like to have the chairman of CADU, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Pius Kamal, to come forward to provide us some remarks. Dr. Kamal. of African Diasporas in the United States, which is a rather new organization and whose uh, progeny and whose history I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. But before that, uh, let me tell you how I, how I got here. Um, I am a physician by training and by practice. I was born and raised in Kenya. Uh, I lived in a town called Mombasa not too far away from um, Ambassador Ali's uh, Zanzibar, where she, where she comes from. So we both speak Swahili. Um, anyway, so for many years, I, re I really didn't do too, too much um, uh, other than practice medicine. 
But in 2007, uh, we read a New York Times piece uh, by a, a lady by the name of uh, uh, Lydia Polgren. And it was about the, the state and the status of uh, higher education institutions in Africa. And it was a terrible, it was a, a terrible indictment of what, what had happened to the, uh, to the universities in Africa. Um, if I may just quickly tell you, uh, growing up in Kenya, um, one of the places we went to was Makerere, Makerere University in, in, uh, in Uganda, Kampala. Um, but let me just tell you, in a very, very short time after my friend Idi Amin became the president, he, uh, he essentially sort of destroyed the place, uh, just, uh, killed most of the professors, um, broke down the uh, laboratories, and uh, essentially pillaged the, uh, the institution. So Makerere, which had been the Oxford of, uh, of Africa, um, became nothing. And that was also true of uh, many institutions in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the rest of Africa. After independence, most of the schools just went down the, down the drain. So we, we thought, uh, a group of us uh, in Denver, Colorado, sat down and began thinking, what can we do? I mean, we're nobody, we're nothing. We are, we, we are sort of stuck in the middle of nowhere. Uh, what can we do? Our solution was essentially to begin at a consortium of universities in, uh, in Colorado. And then we have, we have gone across and, and, and joined more schools across the United States. And then we also, we also reached out to, uh, to uh, East Africa and made another consortium of, of schools there. To make a long story short, we decided that the best thing that we can do to try and help this conundrum was to somehow help women of STEM to obtain their education in this country. And therefore, over the last four or five years, we have worked with, the, with schools in the United States and East Africa to get PhDs for women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So that's essentially what we have tried to do. That we feel that educating a woman is not too far from educating the institution from which she came from the tribe she came from, the clan she came from, and the country where she came from. I'm telling you this story so I can tell you the next, the next thing that uh, happened in progression, which was, as a member of the African diaspora, which essentially AHAP is, my organization is, we were invited to a, a wonderful, wonderful conference by the State Department and USAID, it's called, it's called ID, IDEA, IDEA, in April last year. This is a, it was an interesting grouping of people. Uh, it was a meeting of diasporas from across the world. So we had Indians, we had Chinese, we had uh, Latin Americans, we had Mexicans, we had everybody, including Africans. The one thing that became quite clear in that particular, particular meeting was that the Africans seemed, simply seemed to be confused. We did not seem to have a focus we did not seem to have a common purpose. And uh, the, the problem is, with, if, you don't, if you don't have a common purpose, you cannot do too, too much. You really cannot progress at all. And as a result of that particular meeting, uh, we gathered together a large number of Africans who were attending the particular conference. And over the, uh, over the months that uh, have sort of uh, come after, with the energy of this, of this woman here, Jeanette, somehow CADUS has been formed, the Consortium of African Diasporas in the United States. The idea, once again, of, the, of this particular consortium is to include all African groups and is meant to gather everyone of goodwill, that's African, that is. And we also have anyone who has a desire to work, to work cooperatively together with all African groups. In other words, how, how else can the African diaspora talk to the United States government, to the U.S. Congress, to the media, to the private industry without having one voice? How can you do that? If we have fractured and uh, disparate voices, it's very, very hard to have one particular voice to approach these people and these groupings. So, that's CADUS' main goal. The other goals of, uh, of CADUS are 
education and research, human capacity development in Africa, and the need to work with local African American community and leaders, which is where the CFA comes in. This is a group that has been really proactive about Africa. We take CFA to help us along and to carry us along as we go and build our strength uh, in the future. The other thing also we want to do is a community engagement and economic development. We want to assist African immigrants, children and women, immigrant women. Africans who may, not, may have issues with, with immigration and the immigration papers and what have you, those are people that we have to help and want to help. In addition to that, we also want to have an enhancement of philanthropy for social welfare in Africa. So CADUS is alive and well, CADUS is here, and CADUS is, ahead, is, is ready to go and work in battle for Africa. But let me, for a moment, uh, return back to what I left, uh, left behind in Africa. I left girls in my own family who were disenfranchised. To these women, education was not regarded as an imperative as it was regarded for boys like me. So I'm very happy to report that something amazing has happened since we started our group, AHAP, for the higher education of women. STEM education today of African women is the, is the hardest topic wherever you go. I am very happy about it. Because then, my hope is that this won't be a passing fad. As we know, in America, passing fads don't last very, very long. My, 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 my true hope is that we, this continues and that we have many, many more uh, we, PhDs you know, uh, of, of STEM you know, in African women. We need PhD leaders. We need PhD wealth creators. We also need PhD entrepreneurs. Therefore, their PhD training must include more than academics. We are trying to instill leadership and in entrepreneurship and the need to create wealth for those PhD women who come across our programs. Let me also say that Africa needs several thousand women scientists if it is going to progress in the future. If we can persist in educating women of science, we will have more women academic scientists, women leaders, business women, role models, role models for all African girls. The, uh, the important thing here, once again, is for the African leaders, for African governments to also come along with us and understand that Africa will not progress if we don't create a wealth of knowledge. If we don't create women who are highly educated, Africa will always remain behind. The, the creation of wealth requires that we have women of high education also. Lastly, I would like to say that I have had the great fortune of working with an African woman in organizing this forum. Jeanette is probably one of the hardest working women that I have ever known. If African women are, we are training in physics, engineering, mathematics, can have the diligence and sense of duty that Jeanette has, there's no question in my mind that this is the century of the African woman. I am bullish on Africa. I am bullish on Africa because I am bullish on African women. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. We now um, want to move to our keynote speaker, uh, Ambassador Amina Salom Ali. Uh, let me say that I, I've known her uh, uh, since she arrived in Washington in 2007 uh, as the new uh, Africa Union's first uh, representative to Washington. Uh, I can say that I was the first visitor to her office. I can also say she has a new office in uh, Georgetown that she just opened. I can say that I was the first visitor to that office. Uh, I can say that I worked closely with her over these years. Uh, I can say that her priority 
The priority for being in Washington is to work with the diaspora. Um, she is uh, intelligent. She is hardworking. Uh, she is passionate. She grew up under Julius Nyeri, so she understands Pan-Africanism. Um, and so I think um, we are honored to, today to have with us uh, the uh, permanent representative of the Africa Union to the United States. Will you all please rise to welcome our keynote speaker, Ambassador Amina Simone Ali. Excellency Ambassador Dauda, yeah. my <coughs> sister Janet, my brother Melfoot, my brother from, from Kenya, Dr. Kamau, and member of the panel, I see uh, Reverend Weaver is there. And uh, uh, some others have uh, been together for quite some time, for all the lifetime of our office here. Uh, thank you and Happy New Year for those that are meeting for, uh, since, since last year and uh, greetings for, to everybody. It is a pleasure and a great honor for me to be here today and to address you during this important forum with the theme on African diaspora and development, what partnership. Let me first take this opportunity to really thank our host and my dear brother and the true son of Africa, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Diabate, Ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire. I have met him, as he said, in Brazil, but he also has, uh, among the ambassadors here, that we hear from Africa, who represent their country, Ambassador Diabate had a wealth of experience, very rich in terms of experience. He is among the ambassadors who have worked in Addis Ababa and uh, help Africa to prepare, to come up with all those declarations and decisions. So I hope my, my family, diaspora, brothers and sisters, will uh, take advantage of him being here to be able to work with us to support our initiative and to move this agenda forward. Mm -hmm. I want also to congratulate His Excellency Ambassador Diabate for his ascendance to the chairmanship of our African Ambassador Group here in Washington. This board well with our objective and ambition to support diaspora and promotion of diaspora engagement between our embassies, representing our countries, and diaspora families in the U.S. I want also to thank Ms. Jeanette Kaligou, President of, of Modelsi, for organizing this forum. Discussing with my sister Jeanette, when I, while I was discussing with my sister Jeanette, when she came to meet me in my office to brief me of uh, the organization and the coalition, I was inspired and admired the passion and commitment of Ms. Janet in fulfilling her dream of bringing to fore the diaspora and the challenges confronting them towards promotion, development, and closer engagement of our skills. I was glad to learn about the good work done by Model C, the Ivorian group whose objective is to find ways of educating and generating the creation of wealth for Ivorian in the U.S., as well as in Africa through a series of discussions, workshops on the role and the contribution of the Ivorian diaspora. During this type of dialogue, it gave us opportunity to be exposed to the new dynamics of diaspora and development through a meaningful cooperation and partnership. Let me take this opportunity also 
to thank my dear friend and brother, Melford, President for CFA, for his constant support to the African diaspora, for supporting and co-organizing this forum. We from the African Union and many of us in the diaspora world, we always call him to help, for, we ask him for help. And he is ever ready with a warm smile. Thank you, Brother Melford. I would also want to thank all those who organize and uh, establish the coalition. Because this is what, as African Union, this is what we want. Coalition that would enable our ideas, our uh, suggestion, recommendation, to be able to reach our offices and directly link this institution to African Union. I want to take this moment to greet everyone. It's time to meet again, as I said, also to rekindle our spirit of kinship and brotherly and sisterly love. Let me once again assure you that the African Union believe in the capacity of the diaspora due to our richness and then also in our expertise and commitment to contribute to solve challenges that are confronting Africa and its diaspora. From our own perspective, African Union has indeed made considerable development in the diaspora. I'll be right if I say that what we are today is more advanced even for those who are always pessimist will admit that for, for a hundred miles journey, it begins with the first step. The leadership of the African Union took stock of commitment, our commitment that we had, we had a, a commitment since 2000 when we established African Union, to engage the diaspora at the highest level. We are ready to testify that now we are greatly involved as diaspora in directing through our dialogue and uh, for African, for affairs of Africa. It was an evolution that took us some time to gaze confidently on the future and again believe that yes, Africa, no so distant future will reach the mountain top. Indeed, the Constitutive Act of the African Union, <coughs> the new fundamental law of our institution, is people-centered, people-driven and people-oriented, based on a partnership between governments and all segments of civil society. The people-centered aspiration highlights the fact that a significant part of the African population that reside outside the shores of the continent through successive waves of migration, including the ancient, ancient and modern diaspora, is part of the African Union system. Therefore, they need to be included in the development process of our mother continent, Africa. Brothers and sisters, the role of the diaspora is vital for the development of, uh, of Africa and in all the sectors of life at all levels from the family, community, at the country level, region, as well as continent and at international level. The African Union Commission held a summit on global diaspora as a platform to open discussion on issues that are relevant towards better management and development of African growth involving everybody in the diaspora family. I would like to recall also the important Global African Diaspora Summit that took place on the 25th May 2012 in Johannesburg, South Africa, under the theme toward the realization of a united and integrated Africa and its diaspora, which explored <coughs> concrete ways and means of harnessing the abundant human and material resources in Africa and beyond. To advance the socio-economic development of the continent in close and sustainable partnership with the African diaspora. The summit gave a clear framework for the African on the continent and in the diaspora to work together for the realization of the African agenda. The summit in South Africa was a culmination of the global diaspora consultations in different regions of the world. It was a process that paved the way for decisions and declarations from, uh, from the heads of state and, uh, and government 
in supporting the diaspora engagement. The summit confirmed the keenness and commitment of the diaspora and their readiness to cooperate with Africans and to collectively bring on board the necessary scientific, economic, social and cultural contribution to improve the living standard of Africans and the Africans in the diaspora. The theme of this forum is African diaspora and development. What partnership? To answer this question, cooperation and partnership is the only way to bring about rapid development for Africa and the diaspora. Two things are crucial for the diaspora to be more efficient and also to realize our objective. One, the diaspora needs to be well organized and speak with one strong voice, in the, both in the international arena and in here in our country, whether you are in the US or anywhere outside Africa and inside Africa, defending common African position. Two, there's a need to build a solid partnership between Africa and the diaspora. In the general context of intensification and uh, promotion of South-South cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Global Diaspora Summit of 2012 produced a program of action in three major areas. Number one, political cooperation, economic cooperation, and social cooperation, <coughs> as well as the five legacy projects as well stated in the document that we have distributed to you today for your easy reference. But I profoundly believe that your expertise, your commitment and effort can bear sustainable fruits if you invest in African Union continental programs and our, our state's programs, economic programs. I'm personally convinced that you can make the difference in bringing your inputs for the construction of Africa we want at the continental level to help in the African integration agenda. The African Union heads of state and government have agreed on a number of strategic continental programs like the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa, PIDA, the African Union NEPAD Initiative on Agricultural Growth and Food Security, Comprehensive Africa Agri Agriculture Development Program, CADAP, the Pan-African University, PAU, the AU campaign of, on accelerated reduction of maternal mortality, karma, the plan of action on sexual and reproductive health and rights, Maputo plan of action, the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa, and, uh, and last but not the least, boosting intra-African trade. The decision to transform Africa into a continental free trade area by 2017 and uh, the ambitious program of Africa 2063, whereby Africa is envisaged to be the global economic pole, contributes to the world economy and the player in the global arena. Those are African programs that you can support. For example, in to, to, to give a specific project in education, in health and agriculture, we can work together to mobilize U.S. universities, corporations, our partners, civic society, NGO, to support both in terms of providing expertise, building capacity, and also to build investment fund to uh, bring up these projects. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, before I conclude my speech, I would like to finish by saying that this forum comes at an important moment when we are all preparing for the very first U.S.-Africa Leadership Summit. I urge you as diaspora to let your voice be heard to, ad to advocate for Africa. One example should be to work together and coordinate with embassies to advocate for the renewal of AGOA. You may know that the African Union Ministers of Tra Trade in their declaration during their meeting of October 2013, called upon the U.S. Congress to reauthorize the extension of AGOA by October 2014 
for at least another 15 years. I have brought with me a copy of the Agua Declaration in English and French to also help in, in, in uh, giving you information that you, you, can, you need as a tool to be able to move our diaspora agenda forward. Also, as you are aware, Africa celebrates every year in May, Africa Day. This year, the theme is 2014, Year of Agriculture, transforming Africa's agriculture, harnessing opportunities for inclu inclusive growth and sustainable development. I encourage you to be innovative to celebrate Africa Day, either by joining the African Diplomatic Corps, if possible, or by organizing activities through our own NGO, our own um, uh, initiate the coalition, for example, and inviting embassies to join you. Those are my immediate thoughts to, to open up a dialogue, to look into ways to build partnership between the diaspora and our embassies and also nationally our countries. I, I wish you all a successful forum. Thank you for your attention. Vous avez découvert Ivoire TV Ivoire TV